The last stop on the bus tour of the Kennedy Space Center stops at the Apollo Saturn V Center. Here the tour starts with a video of the manned mission to the moon. Afterwards, a walking tour includes a complete Saturn V rocket for viewing and many of the artifacts and memorabilia relating to the trip to the moon. First took off to fly to the moon. The tragedy of Apollo 1 had put us a year and a half behind. We were making up for it in one big leap, and we were doing it with a rocket that no man had ever flown before. It was a few days before Christmas, 1968, when Apollo 8 sat on the pad. She was the first of a new kind, a moon rocket. This was the phoenix risen from the ashes of Apollo 1 to form on the outside of the craft. The extreme temperature differences between the air and the sub-zero fuel caused the metal skin of the rocket to expand and contract. Everyone was on the pad agreed. It was as though the rocket was alive, breathing, straining at the leash. Earlier in the morning, astronauts Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders had made their final preparations before taking that long ride out to the waiting spacecraft. The minimum safe distance from a Saturn V at liftoff was three miles. The reason is simple. When fully fueled, the rocket contained the explosive power of an atomic bomb. As the clock counted down, the astronauts and all of us in launch control went through the pre-flight checks. Our hands on the controls of the most powerful, most complex machine ever built. It had over two million separate systems. And to bring these men back alive, Everything had to work perfectly. Each individual system had been tested, but what we didn't know was how they would perform when all two million began to work together. That moment would come when the countdown clock reached zero. If a maneuvering thruster failed, if communications broke down, if navigation was off by one degree, if any piece of the miles of wiring, circuits, relays, or valves was defective, Frank won't test pilot. You are now in the final minutes before the launch of Apollo 8. Right here, where it actually happened. Mankind is about to leave his planet behind and journey to another. It is one of those rare moments when history is not being made, destiny is being embraced. This is launch control, T minus three minutes and coming.
seconds to mark. T minus 90 seconds in the corner. The Apollo 8 uh, crew standing by, space back commander Frank Warner, Jim Lover, Bill Hendricks. We now report that the liquid hydrogen tank in the third stage is pressurized. One minute, 15 seconds. All three stages of the pellets pressurized at this time as we come up on the 60 second mark on the flight zone. Two minutes, 60 seconds in the county, the vehicle now is completely pressurized. We have the power transfer, we're now on the flight batteries and we're going to launch Final reports coming from Frank Bowman at this time. Final look at the source of the board, the spacecraft. 20 seconds on our steps, we are still in the road at this time. Apollo 8 was the first crewed spacecraft to leave low Earth orbit and the first to reach the moon, orbit it, and return. I'm Jim Lovell, and I was one of the crew of this spacecraft, Apollo 8. We were the first men to see the surface of the moon from just a few miles away. But it was the hundreds of thousands of men and women who were working to keep them. Millions of people who supported the vision that really made it possible. That way, I guess, we all went to move. Now, uh, on the other side of those doors, you'll find an actual Saturn V moon line. It's still the most powerful, the most complex machine ever built. And I guess it's the only one that could take you to another planet.
14,000 miles an hour. And even at 14,000 miles an hour, we're still not going fast enough to go to the climb up the ladder, get back into that ascent stage, and then they take off, rendezvous, and dock with the command and service module already in orbit. This bottom part, the descent stage, that golden part wrapped in mylar that stays on the surface of the moon. Once they have trans... ...atmosphere and land in the Atlantic. But if they did have to use this, it's only good while they're on the launch pad. If they did have to use it, it would separate the crew from the rest of the rocket, arc them over the Atlantic, and they would splash down there in the water when they're safe. This is uh, Alan Shepard's spacesuit, and uh, it's covered with uh, moon dust. It's amazing when you look at it. This is the uh, Apollo 14 capsule. I believe its name is the Kitty Hawk. 